amazing poet. Uh, she, what are, what's some crazy stuff you've done? I should have had your bio with me. Um, she is an amazing dance moves, as you can see. She's from Mississippi, where shit happens every day. Uh, she says, I know, she's, a, she's an, ama an amazing poet, uh, an amazing writer, uh, a great person, also a great person to get into great trouble with. Um, but uh, she has a book out, obviously, it's over there. Um, I printed it, so I, that's totally redundant for me to say that, that's why you're all here. Um, <laughs> Rewind that a bit. But anyway, she's, uh, and she's been a member of the Austin Poetry Slam team. She was our Iwoods representative. Uh, she was our WALPs representative as well. Mm -hmm. um, and really just is just a, is the ambassador for awesome and, uh, and uh, magic. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, Lacey. <laughs> You have me at debauchery, and I was like, I don't even know that that's what I excel in. Yeah, I, I, debauchery first, poetry second, you know, and then everything from there. But, um, no, I knew today was going to be a good night, because on the drive uh, over here, I saw not one, but two trucks that just said lube. And <laughs> <laughs> the like nine years that I've lived here, I've never seen a loop truck, let alone two. And I think like the tagline was like, "We'll grease your chain." It's like, are you pushing? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, are you a mechanic? Or you just got like dildos? But like, I don't, I don't really know what's going on. But if I didn't have this reading to go to, I would have liked to follow them to see. What I'm <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so this poem has nothing to do with lubrication, unfortunately. <laughs> but maybe next time. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I uh, I love libraries. I'm sure you guys like libraries too. Are they like so like a clap for libraries, right? Libraries are shit. When I go to a new place, I'm like. I need to know where the library is because I got to check it out. Uh, so this is my first time being in this in this uh, in Melbourne Books thing. It's really beautiful, um, and so um, I want to do my library poem since they're surrounded by books. Visit a library with me. Let us lose ourselves in the fiction section. Play lost and found in the R through Z aisle. I want to guess what book you pick up based off the line you read me. We can use our imaginations and pretend to be someone else for a while, reenact the play on the third floor, role play fairy tales on the seventh, close our eyes and pretend that we are flying. We can, do, we can be gypsies, pirates, kings and queens. We can be Virginia Woolf, James Tate, Lorca Plath, or Capote. Forget our fingers and the pages, how your eyes look like they're breathing once you've lost yourself in the words that you're reading. And there are flames in these stories, like there is a liveness in our breath. There's a delicate amber glow in the section we are here. This means, y'all, that the light bulbs are happy to be here. They're happy to show us the books. Let's go. And I'm feeling inspired and defeated of being surrounded in the swamp of genius. Mm -hmm. I want to kiss you on the pleat in between your eyebrows and ask you to make me a suggestion as to what hardback I should add to my collection. I want you to read me the first page of that story in my bed underneath the covers with just the lamp on. Put your ear to your chest and rest while my heartbeat mimics your meter. Linguistic lover, Ruta etymologist, page pedantics. We are aficionados of the alphabet. Now, don't get too excited just yet. I need you to hold my hand and follow me to the bathroom because we're gonna scribble on the stalls, scrawl our favorite words down, definitions and all. Let's highlight the halls, tattoo the toilets with passages from poets, graffiti the ground, stain it with statements and make our mark by declaring to the world what we think of it. You and I are word warriors, literary lunatics instead of book burdens, baby. We're gonna have ourselves some television fires. Hey. This library is our chapel with so much knowledge to absorb. Neither of us will ever be able to do it because no one can, but that's okay. At least we'll keep our minds open. I tell you that we should bring our sleeping bags next time, crawl atop the rafters, sleep above the languages so we can dream ourselves another country. Your eyes get big and hesitant because you know that I'm serious, so you put your finger over my mouth and say, Shh, Lacey, we are in the library. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> Look at all the books, of course we are. It's library day. I thought you'd be real happy to join me. So you playfully 
nudged me, and I run off to find another story to get drunk off of. I find myself absorbed in Federica Garcia Lorca, sipping on his stanzas, getting inebriated off his intellect. I look up to see you critiquing the classic. You always do that. Mm -hmm. You find the flaws in things. I think about how sad I'll be the day that you will inevitably leave me. So I go back to my story, wanting to get lost in the pages and wishing that all along I was the one that you wanted to get lost with. Mm. Maybe. So I learned a, uh, an interesting, I guess, like random fact. That's kind of another thing I do in my spare time. I just like look up random ass shit, you know? Um, yeah, like does anybody know how much the uh, 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 guinea pig armor went on eBay? What is <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is what I look up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. $15,000. Yeah. Some stupid ass shit. Wait, yeah. is armor right? made of guinea pig? No, or it's like it's like an armor for the armor guinea pig. Us. Yeah, it was not I can't the see the house cat. Yeah, it was made of guinea pig. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> Like, the here. medieval times are back where you're a guinea pig, like, you gotta prepare for the apocalypse for your guinea pig, like, it's just getting real, you know? But, um, anyway. I like it. I'll never forget it. <laughs> My wife is a school psychologist. Almost always she comes home and tells me stories about the kids she sees. Recently she told me about a boy who could not sit still. He's an 11-year-old walking disruption, the bane of his teacher's existence. My wife asked him what he does exactly when he wanders out of the classroom and into the great outdoors, he pauses, and with equal part smirk and sincerity says, incredible things, miss. To me, this kid knows more about life than any of the others still inside picking away at a test that is only going to be used to figure out where the gel cell should be built next. It seems to me the mediocrity is not a part of this kid's actions or vocabulary since he occupies his time with nothing shy of incredible, no doubt. This kid probably seems uncontrollable at times, but maybe that's because his mind is too much spark plug for the socket everyone around him is trying to plug him into. Perhaps the only reason he's getting tested instead of being placed into the gifted class is because no teacher ever learned that dark can shine like that. Show him that black can still cocoon you into butterfly, kid. Marvel the English with your impeccable Spanish mouth. Let them know that brown skin is not a prerequisite for after school suspension. When you tell the principal that the reason you don't always come to class is because you're too busy doing something better, I hope the principal takes that as inspiration to try to make the school district to something that feels more like a home and less like a prison. Mm. You see, the problem with the dropout rate is that it has nothing to do with kids. As much as it has to do with our broken system, a flower can only grow as big as the pot it is put into and needs good soil, adequate sun, and decent water. Our public schools look more like drought fields instead of burgeoning gardens. And it's no kid's fault for not following blindly a system that doesn't even see them. What sort of society would we be if we listen to kids with dignity, if we opted for methods of restorative justice instead of acts of violence Come on. for a country that talks about how superior our morality is? It is time for us to take our egos out of our asses and look at how egregiously godless our actions have become. The school to prison pipeline is not a white liberal myth, but a sad minority truth that too often goes unnoticed or condescendingly brushed aside. That's why when the school bell rings tomorrow, I want it to bellow, I want it to shout, I want it to shatter every window, breaking everything that attempts to keep equality and education out so that true learning and opportunity can finally come in. Mm. P is for poverty, perpetrator, and pussy. fabric of this country fall apart 
And it has fallen apart because of single moms. What we have is moms raising children and single parent households simply breeding more criminals. A direct quote from Rick Santorum. Let's face it, America is in shambles. The whole ship is sunk and we need another man to fix it. The hell with the women, they have all gone to put. Look at them all having bastard babies and internment camps should fix them or reparative rape. That'll teach the horse, <coughs> excuse me, women. This whole birth control business has gotten their values all out of whack. Boys will be boys, but women should know better. Just stay at home and let your father or husband protect you. And if you should have to leave the house to buy milk or eggs or a loaf of bread, then for Lord's sake, wear baggy jeans, four belts, and an ugly turtleneck. The burden is on the woman and not the man. And don't you forget, if we want the fabric of this country sewn back together, if we want this country out of poverty and debt, we must praise our sons and condemn our daughters, remind them that this country is ruled by kings. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's just like, I don't know, that came out of just, you know, it's like you wake up and you're like, man, it is a beautiful day. And then you turn on your computer and you're like, God damn it, I should have never done that. I should have just, just went on a walk. You know? <laughs> You know, like, yeah, you know, picking up dog shit is like better than just hey. that, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. I have, I have a huge Great Dane. Uh, aren't Great Dane saying awesome? Yeah, he's great. So I'm six feet tall. When he stands on his hind legs, we're the same height. Crazy. Yeah, he uh, eats like 60 pounds of dog food a month, right? So this beast. Uh, after a holiday party, takes the whole thing of Trader Joe's cookies, not just the oatmeal chocolate chip, which I would have eaten, <laughs> but the ginger snaps too. So he had like a hundred cookies, right? <laughs> and he was just great. <laughs> I was like, the big deal is. Uh, I was like, okay. Uh, and then yeah, I took him outside, everything's fine. Four hours later, Everything is definitely not fine, and it was like all Great Dane vomit is all over the sofa. Oh, no. And then I was like, no, nah, they don't want kids anymore. No kids anymore. And that was the end of the story. <laughs> oh, um, I'm terrible. <laughs> Today I squinted so hard into the face of the Texas sun, I thought I had blistered my eyeballs. I wanted to stare at the magnitude of forgiving flame to be in awe of such a honeycomb in the sky. The sun has always been a sheet to me. Nothing makes you sweat quite like a woman. A perfect sphere in our solar system, she is both revered and feared. When I read how one million Earths could fit inside her hips, I thought how wise she was to keep us at such a distance. What science says is that eventually the sun will consume the Earth. As I am writing this, it is 165 degrees somewhere in Iran and 110 degrees in Austin, Texas. I think she is getting closer. I imagine it must be a terrible kind of lonesome to burn everything you touch. The sadness to me is how the woman is always blamed for the burden. It isn't the son's fault we are made of paper, that we are not invincible against the torch of her smile, the blister of her perfect skin. So I'll do a couple more. Um, and yeah, like Kevin mentioned this earlier, it's not a fun thing to do uh, bookstore readings because you can, I can just bullshit with you guys. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is very nice though. The, not the bullshit part, but to be able to take your time and, and uh, read new stuff and read shorter things. But this is kind of like a two-parter. I was going through so many journals and uh, 
And uh, this time I was in San Francisco, so just like conjure up a few memories. And yeah, so uh, the first is uh, Prelude to San Francisco. That time we said fuck it and decided to take a knife to the night and cut our dreams into the sky. We caught the stars as they fell as we coughed the sunset out, dance at midnight into the moon's rise. It was all blue burst and burning, a magnetic marvel we were with all that howl in our skin, with all that glow in our bones. The stars did squint when they saw us coming. San Francisco appraised. That was when we didn't have a beginning or an end just to be coming. The way we watched our skin unravel at the seams, took the streets and hazed the city in our happiness. Every lamplight glittered with lightning bugs. The men kissed on corners, women's skirts pulled up with consent for each other's lips, the collarbone, thighs, and hips. We rode a joint in the mission, smoked it on a curb in the Castro. The scent of piss laced with glitter littered the air. The diffuse of bourbon in our flask cut the stench, and we laughed and laughed about it. As we watched our feet float under us, the entire world removed from gravity. I said, I'd give anything for a typewriter or a pen right now. And you said, I need six strings to strum this thing out. And away we went to see what kind of art we could bleed out. The typewriter became a crack knuckle course with each strike of the keys. Your guitar looked like an open throat. The sounds we made were as simple as water. A 3 a.m. cleansing, I couldn't tell if I was more high on pot or on the art, but that did not matter. A lemon tree grew in your backyard. We watched the sun rise through its branches. I picked an orange and thought the sun was dripping down my fingers. Oh, San Francisco, you haven for the outcasts and the artists, the way you let the queer kids wear your halo, a cradle for the cracked. You say, just because you were here in a thousand pieces does not make you broken. We are all here for something, you say. I praise to the night and to the early morning, to the stranger at the coffee shop who took me in, and how we made art from dusk to dawn. A praise to the becoming, a praise to one random night in the city that said, welcome. You are welcome here, just the way you are. Thank you, guys.